Molt check, one, two, one, two, three. Molt check, one, two, three, four, five. Thumbs up if you're good. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two.
Yes, I can hear you, Julie. How are you? Um, Bill Palatucci dropped by just a little while ago, and he's going to be coming back. I'm sorry? Yeah, he said he, he had dropped by. He said he was going to come back. So I was in the process of firing up my earphones. I've got a pretty decent delay. That's not good. Oh, there's Bill. right over there. So is Tom Kane Sr. Yeah, I can hear you show. How are you? Yes. How bad, how bad is the delay? Yes, I will have Palatucci, you're told. There he is. Six seconds, wow, that's pretty bad. I'm gonna go get a sip of Coke. It's 10.38, I got time.
Shoshana. Show. It's like a six second delay, so they can't hear you. to me. Hi, have they called the race yet? Okay, thank you. One minute to air. Stage House uh, Tavern in Mountainside, and this is a very happy, relaxed crowd. Uh, at this point, the candidate himself has already been on the floor, and here is Bill Palatucci joining me. Thank you for being here. Sure, Brendan. Uh, Republican National Committeeman, and has been helping out with the campaign. Tell me, what kind of message can we expect to hear from Bob Meekin going forward in this uh, race against uh, Bob Menendez in the general election? given the fact that there's the 800 pound gorilla that's in the room is Donald Trump. I think there's a bunch of 800-pound gorillas in, in the room, which is why you know, Bob's message of being an independent Republican, independent guy, born and raised in New Jersey, who's made a success of his life going to Princeton, first in his family go to, go to college, a Marine, and being a success because he's an independent guy, makes up his own mind. Nobody's going to tell Bob Hugan um, how to vote or what he thinks is right or wrong. And so I know you're referring to Donald Trump as the 800-pound gorilla in the room, but Bob has been very clear to say, listen, I'm going to tell Donald Trump when I agree with him, and I'll be happy to tell him when I disagree with him. I think that's what people want these days. It would be refreshing to have somebody who speaks his mind and who can, and Bob has the resources to be independent. At this 
this point, Jersey hasn't sent a Republican to the Senate for over 40 years. So how is he going to appeal to, to the moderate blue state, especially one that's looking at a blue wave? As, are we going to see this big tent that we used to see back in the day with the Republican Party? Yeah, I think you, back to the uh, big, big tent, again, I think when you're a Republican or Democrat in New Jersey, I think voters are, you know, tired of business as usual in Washington and Trenton, and they want a new face. You pick a new face in uh, Bill Murphy as governor of New Jersey. And so, uh, same argument at the Senate race, a, a new face, uh, uh, again, an independent thinker, a guy who's been a native New Jerseyan, who's made a success out of his life. I think a message will go really far. And we will expect to hear from the candidate at perhaps 9, 9.15 tonight. Thank yep. you for joining us. No problem. Good to see you, Brenda. Thank you. Here we are reporting live from Bob Higgins headquarters in the Senate Mountain Side. Very jerky here. They're streaming us. Is that how we look um, on our on, on YouTube or on our, our website?
Hey guys. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming out and supporting Bob. Um, just a quick update with 25% of the precincts reporting. Bob Hugan, 79%. Be with you momentarily, so stay tuned, guys. Thank you. Excuse me, guys. One more very exciting announcement. With 27% of the Democratic uh, vote reporting in, Lisa McCormick has over 40% of the vote. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the stage, Mountainside VFW Commander, Tim McLaughlin, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, to lead us in the national anthem, Roselle Park Councilman Thos Shipley. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in. still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave for oh, the land of the free and the home of the Now to lead us in an invocation from the from the United Methodist Church of Summit. Please welcome Pastor Sean Hogan. Good evening. Will you join with me in an attitude of prayer? Let us pray. Ever present God, we gather here so grateful for the gift of the freedoms we have in this nation. Among them, the privilege we each are given to play a part in building a community of justice and mercy. We pray tonight for Bob and for all candidates in political processes across the state that they and their families may sense your presence and know the strength that comes from leaning on you. Grant us each the focus and the energy needed for the life-giving work of hope and wholeness in our complex world. Give us perspective on the strengths and the needs of our state and give us vis vision of what could be, that we may faithfully and with integrity face the opportunities and the challenges of our time. All this we ask in humility and in hope. Amen. Amen. Next, please join me in welcoming Republican State Committee Chairman, Doug Steinhardt. All right, good evening, everybody. A um, couple of quick acknowledgments. First, I'd like to welcome two former New Jersey governors, Christine Todd Whitman and Tom Kane, Sr. Governors, welcome to the room. Our Senate and Assembly leaders are in the house tonight, Tom Kane Jr. and John Bramnick. Leaders, hello.
And I'd like to welcome the rest of our New Jersey Republican Senate and Assembly delegation. Senators, Assemblymen, and women, good evening. This is a proud night for the Republican Party in New Jersey. Tonight we have solidified a dream slate of strong and qualified candidates who put us in the best position for November's success. Leadership starts at the top, and as a result of tonight's victory, the first name at the top of the November general election ballot is Bob Hugan. The New Jersey Republican State Committee is excited to stand with Bob as our nominee for the United States Senate. Bob stands for everything that is great about New Jersey. He was raised on Jersey values, went to college here, and only left long enough to serve our country with honor and distinction for seven years as a United States Marine. After that, Bob came back to New Jersey, where he became a job creator and a leader in one of our state's most important economic engines, the pharmaceutical industry. He's an honest, hard-working embodiment of the American dream. And what a contrast that is to the other Bob, Bob Menendez. The other Bob is a career politician who has spent more time running from the law than he has running his own Senate office. New Jersey can't afford a U.S. Senator who would rather use his considerable influence to do favors for his criminal friends than dig his own constituents out of being 50th out of 50 states on everything from affordability to taxes. Tonight, over 40 percent of Democratic primary voters have already rejected Bob Menendez by supporting Lisa McCormick. My message to Lisa McCormick and her camp is, you got a home right here with Bob Hugan and the Republicans. This November, New Jersey voters will finally have a chance to render their own verdict on Bob Menendez's abysmal record. Public polling suggests that a jury of New Jersey's more than 5 million voters are ready for change. Only last week, FDU's Polling Institute released data that had this race within just four points. We've got the right candidate. We've got the right message. We are on the path to victory. The first race is over. The primary is behind us. Enjoy tonight because it starts all over again tomorrow. And the next time we pull together a group like this, it will be November 6th, my 50th birthday, and the day New Jersey, <laughs> that's right, not getting any younger, and the day New Jersey will welcome the newest U.S. Senator and the first Republican elected to that office since 1972, Bob Hugan. The NJ GOP is ready to support Bob, our congressional races, and county and local Republicans in every corner of the state. We've developed a coalition of stakeholders that is strong and unified. We're working in partnership with the RNC, the NRSC, the NRCC, and every county and municipal GOP organization to build grassroots networks and deliver our message from neighbor to neighbor and door to door. We are delivering new cutting edge tools to every campaign with a focus on smart data. In the coming days, we'll be rolling out the most sophisticated system of support for New Jersey Republican campaigns that has ever come out of the NDA GOP. So the clock starts now. We have 152 days in which to win this election. On behalf of the NJ GOP, we are proud of the role we are about to play and what we know will be a monumental success that defies history. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Doug Steiner. It is my privilege to serve as your chairman. Now it is also my privilege to introduce one of the most popular governors in the history of this great state. He literally wrote the book on the politics of inclusion, shining a light on the road to victory for any Republican who runs for statewide office. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and honor to introduce Governor Tom Kane. Mr. Chairman, Governor Whitman, thank you all very, very much. What a wonderful night this is. It really is. And, and look, I was first elected to office 
Christmas Day, a little over 40 years ago. Now, I haven't done a lot of campaigning recently, <laughs> leaving that to the senior senator from Union County. But, <laughs> yeah, I'll clap for him. <laughs> and I have been working on things like clean air and clean water and school reform and a bunch of other issues. But, you know, this year is different. This year is very, very different. Uh, you know, we live in, a, in the midst of alarms. Anxiety beclouds our future. We expect some new anxiety with every newspaper we read. That was said by Abraham Lincoln right before the Civil War. But he could have said it this morning. He really could have said it this morning. This is a very difficult time. And when you have a difficult time, what you need is the very best. You need to find men and women who are willing to step forward and lead this democracy. Now, we need, so we need those kind of leaders. Uh, Bob, Bob has done such a wonderful job in every single aspect of his life. This is a man who was the first in his family to go to college. After that, he proudly served in the Marine Corps. He came to take over a business, which was very small, and made it one of the largest businesses in the state of New Jersey. And not only one of the largest businesses in the state of New Jersey, but a business that helped people get well, that cured people. There are people who are alive today who would not be were it not for Solgene and Bob's work. <laughs> He's got a tremendous intellect, very intelligent. He's independent. He'll do very well in Washington. He'll shake it up, but he'll do very, very well. And he knows something with him. The bottom line is always going to be what's best for the state of New Jersey. That's going to be his bottom line. And let me tell you just one more thing. Never, ever, ever will ev anybody in this state or in this nation have any reason to question Bob Hugan's integrity. This election is important for our state, it's important for our country. We need a leader like Bob, and now I'd like to present you with the next senator from the state of New Jersey, Bob Hugan. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Governor Kane, for those kind remarks. Chairman Steinhardt for opening up the event, the event. Governor Whitman for being with us. Thank you all for being here. Just thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Tonight's victory is a major step forward for our campaign, but it's also a major step forward for all of the people of New Jersey. And I want to thank you for all you've done and all you're doing to position us for success in November when it counts. As you see tonight with the numbers, your efforts are making a real difference. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But make no mistake, this is just the beginning. Success in June was never our ultimate goal, never our final destination. It's just an important step in our journey together to November. Thank you. Now, I, I want to thank my family for being with us tonight. You know, my wife, Kathy, 30 years. We're so, we're so proud of our daughter, Hillary. 
I see my sister-in-law, but where's my brother? Oh, he's hiding back there. My, my brother John, he's my older brother, and, and his wife Kathy from Nutley. Go Nutley! Yeah. My cousin Mary Lou, but, but also my sister Fran is here. And, and, and Fran has been a, was a school teacher for over 35 years, just retired, spent most of that time in Union City. And I'll say it's a tough place to teach, but did a great job 35 years. But also, thank you for your service. But I also have to tell you, she keeps me on my toes. I have to work to earn her vote every day. You know, we, we all wish that, that our sons, Robbie and Mac, could be here tonight, but they're serving on active duty in the United States Marine Corps. So we wish them great for and God bless them. And there's another person who's not with us tonight, who's, uh, and that's my mother. For those of you that have been on the campaign trail with us, you know how important my mother is to me, and not as much as Kathy, but, uh, <laughs> but very, very, very important to me. Uh, she lives in Ocean County and recently celebrated her 98th birthday. Wow. You know, she continues to have a great impact in my life. So much of who I am and what I believe in and what I stand for is because of her. She was the valedictorian of the class of 1937 at Tom's River High School. But, you know, in those days, often women didn't get a chance to go to college, and that was her fate. And it was just not, not common for women in Tom's River to go to college. And that's always bothered me. My mother deserved better. She deserved every opportunity. She's an amazing role model for all of us. We've come so far, but we have far more to do to ensure equality for everyone. Let, let, let me assure you that Kathy and I did not enter, make the decision to enter this race to finish second. I promise you that. And, We're in this race because New Jersey deserves a senator as good as its people, not one whose greatest accomplishment is staying one step ahead of the law. Bob, Bob Menendez and I both grew up in Union City. He chose to enter politics to serve himself and his wealthy donors, a cloud of corruption and an entourage of convicted criminals have followed him ever since. Indicted for bribery by the Obama Justice Department, punished by the bipartisan Senate Ethics Committee, guilty of violating federal law for accepting over $1 million in illegal gifts, now arrogantly refusing to pay that money back. I think that message is pretty clear. I think you can hear, hear that all the way to Harrison. Yeah. Let's be clear. Good people don't behave this way. That's his character. That's who he is. Bob Menendez thinks that New Jersey voters will blindly vote for him just because he's a Democrat. Wrong, Bob. And he's the wrong Bob. <laughs> We're a tough state, but we're not stupid. New Jersey is smarter than that, and we're going to prove it in November. Yes. Bob Menendez chose a path of corruption. I chose a different path. 
with the love and support of my family and because of the values they instilled in me, I was incredibly fortunate to become the first person in my family to attend college. After college, I wanted to give back, to serve a purpose larger than myself. So I joined the United States Marine Corps, serving seven years on active duty as an infantry officer. <laughs> Semper Fi. And speaking of the Marine Corps, we are so proud and humbled that our two sons, Robbie and Mac, also chose to serve our country and defend our freedoms as Marines themselves. Kathy, Hillary, and I love them so much and ask God to bless and keep them safe every day. We all pray for the men and women who so bravely serve our country all around the world. Thank you for, those, for their service. <laughs> Joining the Marines was far and away one of the best decisions of my life. The military is truly the melting pot of America, and the honor of wearing that uniform taught me so many lessons that I carried into my life and now into this race for Senate. In the Marines, you never run from trouble. You run towards it. In the Marines, you don't ignore problems. You solve them. In the Marines, it's not about Democrats or Republicans. It's about working together. Frankly, that's what we need more of in Congress. And that's the kind of senator I will be for New Jersey. I will be an independent voice that always, always puts our state and our people first. No exception, no exception. That means being a different kind of Republican, one who will stand up and disagree with President Trump when his policies are bad for New Jersey, and one who will work with Republicans and Democrats to improve the quality of life in New Jersey, like funding for the Gateway Tunnel and opposing offshore drilling. I'm I am pro-choice, pro-marriage equality, and Pro-marriage equality, yes. <laughs> Especially ours. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes. There's always power behind. Uh, uh, you know, I am pro-choice. I support pro-marriage uh, pro equality. And I strongly support equal pay for equal work. I believe we as a party and as, and as a country need to fix our immigration system in a comprehensive and compassionate way. That means securing our borders, yes, securing our borders. <laughs> Opposing sanctuary cities, these so-called sanctuary cities. Supporting law enforcement as they keep our communities safe. And it also means creating a path to citizenship for dreamers and immigrants who may not have come here legally. A path to citizenship for dreamers and immigrants who may not have come here legally, but are building productive and constructive lives in America. We are a nation of immigrants, a nation that is made better, fuller, and stronger by the diversity and talents of all of our people. Politicians in Washington would rather point fingers at each other rather than reach out and extend their hands in cooperation and compromise. I will be different, I will lead, and we will get things done for the people of New Jersey. And as 
we all well to know, know well too well, I think, we definitely know it. And when I tell you, when I tell you what we know, you're going to know that you know it. Because if one thing that New Jersey has, it's an affordability crisis. Our state is fifth. Our state is 50 out of 50. We are dead last in what we get back from Washington versus what we send there. The cap on state and local tax deductions will, will mean more dollars lost to Washington and more people leaving our state. Bob Menendez sat on the sidelines while that cap was passed, has voted nearly 100 times to raise taxes, and now he's supporting Governor Murphy's reckless budget to hike taxes another $1.7 billion. <laughs> 25 years of failed leadership is too long. It's time for him to go. You will no doubt hear a lot about my career in business during this campaign. The Menendez smear machine has already begun with their dishonest and misleading attacks. Here's the truth. When I joined Celgene, the company had six weeks of cash left. Hundreds of jobs were at stake, and the company was being lured to leave New Jersey. Today, Celgene is one of New Jersey's largest private sector employers with thousands of high-paying, high-tech jobs and is recognized as one of the best companies to work for in the entire country, if not the world. But most importantly, Celgene is known for creating medicines that have led the fight against multiple cancers, saving and extending lives, and closing in on cures. And let me be clear, let me be clear, Celgene has been recognized as having one of the most effective and compassionate patient assistance programs in the country to ensure that those in need have full access to those life-saving medicines. <laughs> Frankly, Celgene has done more good for people in the last 25 minutes than Bob Menendez has done in Washington for 25 years. gentlemen, I stand before you tonight as someone who came from humble beginnings, the first in my family to go to college, to proudly wear the uniform of the United States Marine Corps, to achieve great things in business, and support organizations whose mission it is to improve education and health care here. Bob Hugan and Bob Menendez, and at the end of the day, it's going to be a Bob Hugan victory in November. What can we expect to see going forward? How are you going to characterize this campaign? It's a little loud. I'm sorry. One more time. I know. It's really loud. And uh, reporters who have little know, eye bees in their ear watch. their whole life, we read lips. Um, what do you expect to see? And how would you characterize this campaign moving forward now? Well, I think Bob Bob's going to do what he's done up to this point, which is, you know, talk to the folks in New Jersey, keep playing a positive message that resonates with them, uh, and continue to do the things that he's done that's got him through the primary night. You know, over the course of the next 152 days, you'll see him become a household name in New Jersey, and that's what's going to carry him through the November election. Let's talk about the rest of, of the state in terms of the other the other districts. What are you seeing in terms of, of turnout and, and in who's, who's winning? 
Well, I haven't seen a lot of the turnout numbers yet. You know, we've been focused on Bob's race here and obviously very happy with what's happened here. Once I'm done with what we're doing tonight, we'll go circle back with the rest of the NJGOP group and see how the rest of our candidates are doing. But, you know, clearly having Bob at the top of the ticket is a big deal for all of the rest of us. We know that the Democrats, you know, have painted a big target on New Jersey's back. Our entire Republican congressional delegation is under attack. But, you know, we've fielded a great group of candidates who relate well to their respective constituencies. And we're very confident that we're going to be able to give them the resources they need to respond to that and to be successful in November. Do you know how Jay Weber is doing? I haven't heard anything about Jay. Jay would be a wonderful candidate out there. He's got deep, deep roots in Morris County, and that's a real strong Republican stronghold for years and years. So do you see at this point a matchup where this blue wave is possibly going to turn some of the Republican districts? I haven't seen a blue wave, but if you spend any time here tonight, I'm quite sure you saw a big red one. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thanks for your time. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. you guys want to get uh, Bob's wife, Kathy, and his daughter, Hillary, on camera? sacrifice for Bob and for our family. It's not an easy thing to do to run for federal office, but I am so proud of him for taking this on, and our family is behind him 110 percent. Um, and he kept looking behind him when he was giving his speech, checking in with you, that he was, what, saying the right thing? I know, I know. We're a very close family. We, we work together, and um, we're going to work together to make this happen for New Jersey. Hearing him talk about equal pay for equal work, uh, talking about gender equality, talking about um, abortion, that he's pro-choice, how do you feel that this is going to play with women candidates uh, across the state? There are a lot of, of... Excuse me? Women. How do you think this is going to play with women across the state, women voters? Um, I hope that it will play well. Uh, that is what he truly believes, and I believe it's what what is right for the state of New Jersey and for our country. It, it, proud it's of him for taking a different stance as well. Um, it's easy as a young woman to not necessarily agree with the views of your father. I'm so proud of him for doing something a little different, um, and it's just I'm really so proud to be able to share those values and beliefs with him and have him stand up for them in a public space. Now this is the guy who was the Trump delegate. Awesome. This is Thank very you. different. Oh, why are you stopping me? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had the exit. Sorry? He was actually Trump delegate. Yeah. Why? I, thought we had to I don't this think that that's different. a reflection on his character. I don't think it reflects on his character at all. As he said on the stage, he'll stand up against Trump when he needs to, and he'll agree with him when, he's, when it's right for New Jersey, and I believe he'll do that, and I think that's exactly what the state needs. I, people, though, are looking at this as being almost like a, a 180 spin. Someone who was very solidly in the president's camp when he was running. Absolutely not true. He was looking for disruption in Washington. He was hopeful that Trump would, would break up the gridlock in Washington. He understands that now we have dysfunction. But there have been some good things that have come out of it. And like my daughter said, he will stand up for what is right. End of story. Thank you.
declares victory, declares he will stand up and disagree with Donald Trump, and comes out swinging against Senator Bob Menendez. Bob Hugan declares victory, declares he will stand up and oppose Donald Trump, and comes out swinging against Senator Bob Menendez. I don't have a mirror. Bob Hugan nope. Bob Hugan declares victory, declares he will stand up and oppose Donald Trump, and comes out swinging against Senator Bob Menendez. Are you doing the statewide elections? Yes. No? Well, I mean... I was. Yes. <laughs> Good luck, Good luck. Sure. Is this my Garen station? Yes, it is. Tell my said hello. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to have to hang up real quick. Uh, let me get. Whoops. Let me do, let me get you really quick, and sure. then I'm going to have to. Certainly. I'm so sorry. We're already starting to edit for our run of the awesome. I understand that. So, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Give me your full name. My name is Rich Pizzullo. I'm glad you said it. Thank you. And tell me, what are you doing now in terms of a battle plan against somebody like Pallone? Frank Pallone is unliked in large areas of his district. The voter turnout has been shrinking and shrinking as people have been disenfranchised by a lack of a good choice. So I've been working with the local uh, committee people in each town, people that are trying to flip seats, working, going door to door in neighborhoods that haven't normally been campaigned in. So we've put together a very aggressive street campaign talking to people that haven't been talked to before. And they're excited that people want to come out and, and talk to them and learn what they are. We're going out and actually finding the forgotten men and women that aren't being represented in Congress, and we're going to bring some representation to them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I understand a lady. I'm Daryl Kiptis. I'm running in the 12th district. Very nice to meet you. I'm rolling on it. I'm rolling on it. I won't forget. Can you get part of this I don't think you need to. We have new ones. Yeah, it's on the front. It's on, it's on the front. It's on the front? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Brenda, you got to give me a longer heads up before every interview they want to roll on. I wasn't planning on you. I understand.
trying to kick us out. So. I'll see you on TV, okay? Hold on, hold on a sec. Hold on. 